Okay, for the first composition project, in addition to all the techniques we've learned about how to set up tracks, how to record, um, how to edit uh, non-destructively, and how to route various signals through different tracks for uh, various reasons, for example, the auxiliary sends. Um, there's a few more things that um, I want you to work on uh, exploring with uh, Pro Tools, which is uh, considered destructive editing because what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a clip or a whole section of a clip and do some sort of processing to that particular sound file itself to, um, to alter it. The first one, which is uh, kind of a, a good practice uh, in getting um, getting your sound files up to a level because uh, up to a level that's workable because sometimes as you can see for example this uh, sound file here actually I'm just going to shrink this uh, a little bit um, the um, you can see the audio um, is uh, uh, the the waveform you can see is not closing uh, pushing close to the edge which means this is quiet you can see also this one down here is very quiet as well so what we want to do is a, a something called normalize which is a destructive edit which basically increases the uh, amplitude of the uh, entire sound file so that it's uh, up to a higher level so these are all going to be found in uh, the pull down menu called audio suite um, and these have um, similar process effects that you see that we put into the uh, inserts um, and into the sends, which were not destructive in, um, uh, in the fact that we could turn them on and off and they didn't affect the, um, the clip directly. But here what we want to do is some special processing. So normalize basically is going to increase the, um, the level of the highest uh, amplitude to its maximum in the... Um, and the range of um, from zero to one. So um, it's at 100. You don't have to set it at 100%, but um, it's good to start out at 100% to be able to bring it up. And then whenever you finish one of these processes, you just want to hit render. And you can see already it brought the level up of the sound file. Um, just visually, you can see that. So that's one that you can explore. Another one, um, now we start to get to play with the sound file a little bit beyond just putting effects on them. Uh, the first one you can uh, ex experiment with is one that's called reverse. So basically, um, it's, uh, there's not any real settings uh, in this one. Um, all it's going to do is take whatever you selected in your sound file and reverse it. And you can um, sample what it sounds like, or you can listen to what it sounds like before you make the change by cl clicking this button. And you'll see as soon as you play this button in the reverse, um, function, it will play the sound file backwards. And if you want to choose that, you can just hit render. So reverse is the second one. Uh, a couple more that are interesting to transform your sound files into um, uh, completely different things. One is called time shift. Time shift, time shift does two things. There's a lot of dials here, but the ones that you can really focus on here are these two blue ones. So this one is going to change the speed. So you can see the speed right now is, is um, at, at 100%. You can slow it down by dragging down to the left and you can see it will slow down the sound file and then you can click on here and listen to it, see what that sounds like. You can also speed up the sound file uh, which will make it faster. It will keep the same pitch as it did before but perhaps you don't want to speed it up and slow it down. Perhaps you want to transpose it which means uh, increasing the pitch level uh, and you can see that as long as you drag the blue button the other numbers will take care of themselves. You can audition it, or you could do a combination of both of them and see what that sounds like. And if you want to save that, um, or you want to use that effect, you can hit render, and it will change uh, the sound file. It's destructive in the sense that it changes the sound file, but if you notice that um, as soon as you made a, a change to the original sound file, it, it makes a new sound file. So it's, it's non-destructive in the sense that um, it, will, it will transform and make a new version of the sound file. It is destructive in the sense that the sound file itself that you changed has changed. Uh, so that's uh, the third one. Then there's a um, pitch shift, which is kind of like the previous one, but here you have a, a little keyboard, and because it's a stereo track, you can see there's a left channel and a right channel, and if you press on them, you can see that they're synced so that whatever will happen on the left will happen on the right. If you don't want, you can click the link uh, and you can see you can change the pitch of the left channel but not the right channel. So, um, and if you want to audition and see what it sounds like, 
Oops. Uh, you have to make sure that audio is selected, so I have to drag over something first, and then you can click on it. And now you have two channels that are playing back different transpositions of that. And you can play with uh, different elements. There's also delay as well. That's linked. Um, you can turn off the link if you want the delay to be different sides. Um, you can have a, um, more feedback, which means it will kind of, uh, almost like an amplifier and guitar will feedback on itself. So those, those four elements, normalize, reverse, pitch shift, and pitch two, can all be found on the audio suite. And they're examples of kind of transforming the uh, sound file into something where, than what it originally was. And I want you for your um, first composition project to play with these and make these a part of your, uh, part of your composition.